That's fine. Welcome to uh, this week's uh, support chat on how to share simulations among your simulation developers. I'm Jonathan Kay from sim to share And today I wanted to review, uh, you know, obviously with the name Sims You Share, one of the first questions people have is, how do I share simulations? Um, right now, that's what the topic of this talk is going to be. Uh, certainly, if any of people in the audience have questions, specific things as I go through them, please chime in, either put a chat a message in there or unmute your microphone. Um, I have a series of things to go over to kind of show you what, uh, how, where simulations are stored and how you might transfer them among different computers. Um, but um, certainly, if there are things that you have specific questions about, feel free to interrupt me so I can address them. Um, so I thought that in order to understand how to share simulations, the first step would really be where are simulations stored. Uh, one of the things about SimGShare is we try and take the idea of placing them in a, um, where they're located on your hard drive out of the picture because once you start having to specify where they're located, people might have different versions. They may scatter them, and this might be on a thumb drive and whatever, and it gets into more complexity. Certainly the message about SimGShare is trying to keep it simple, uh, simple and predictable. So once we talk about where the simulations are stored, we also then can talk about how do you change that location where they're stored. Then we can see how you transfer the sims among the platforms, um, putting sims into common folders, so organizing the simulations. Then lastly, something a little more advanced, but with our station edition, where the emphasis is clearly more on sharing simulations, how you can configure that to make sharing simpler. For those of you who are not familiar, the station edition, we also call the site license, is a version where anyone can create. You can put it onto a network, uh, since you share onto a network, and people can very easily share simulations um, and create multiple folders. And so it's not just limited like the personal edition to a single user. So. The core idea of Sims you Share is the democratizing of simulation, not making just one guy. Well, he's the technical guy. He's the training guy. He's the one who creates simulation. We really want to make the simulations as part of any kind of training the responsibility of everyone. I mean, that's the culture of safety, is that everyone participates in being able to uh, create problems, understand how to, how to um, solve those problems, how to teach. So it's really everyone's training and safety is really everyone's responsibility. And so the idea of Sims you Share being a tool that pretty much anyone can create situations, uh, either for themselves or to teach their colleagues. So without getting too much into that, let me start by going into where simulations are stored. Um, I'm going to reduce this right now, stop that sharing. And I'm going to uh, now, so, you know, we have different versions of Sims you Share. I'm going to show you right now on the Windows and Mac version. Um, and I'm going to now show my screen here. This is, um, see, if you, you'll see now, um, you will see that excuse me, I just had to mute the mic for a second. Um, the simulations on Windows or Mac are stored in the Documents folder by default. And you'll see here, if I go down the Documents, you'll see once you start running the program, it creates a folder called Sims You Share. And inside the Sims You Share folder, you'll see two things. There are actually three in this situation, but there's a Sims folder, there's a Catalog folder, and then this config is something else. But in the Sims folder, you'll see here, here are all your simulations organized into their own separate folder. So if I actually now run the program, let me now show you. I'm going to go and um, show you what Sims you Share looks like. So now there's our Sims you Share program. Now if I go to Edit, you'll see here there's a couple things here like Overview, Home, Row Home, Pipeline, whatever. These are the simulations. And by default, Sims you Share looks in the document folder for your simulation. So now like here at Jumeria Towers, I was helping someone out of the U.S. do something. And if I switch back, and I'm going to switch back over to, uh, to the Sims folder, you'll see, actually, I think it's Dub1, which is Jumeria Towers. So you'll see that these, this is where it stores it. And if you look into a folder, let's look at like pipelines, you'll see a simulation really consists of 
a bunch of files, on the, which some of which are pictures, and others, this important one is called SIMDEFXML. But it's not really important that you understand what those pieces are, so much as you understand that this, in, this is a SIM, a pipeline folder, residential, dub1, dub2, whatever. And so by default, again, SIMs are stored inside of a special folder called that it creates, the program creates, called SIMs you share inside your documents folder. But if they're not stored at this level. Sometimes people will see transferring simulations. They think, let me put the simulation into the SIMs you share folder. To transfer simulations, we'll see you have to go into the SIMs folder. And uh, just for interest, the catalog is the thing that details what simulations are available. And the program, program manages that catalog file as new simulations are created or deleted. So that's on the Windows side of things, uh, Windows and Macintosh. On the mobile side of things, just for people out there with Android, um, or uh, let's talk about the iPad, iPhone. Um, if I go over here into iTunes, and um, I'm opening up, let me actually switch over to my iTunes over here. This is now, um, I'm going over to my iPad. You can see here Jonathan's iPad. And on the iPad or iPhone, you have to access your simulations through iTunes. So now, if I actually go here to the apps folder, um, or, I'm sorry, the apps tab, wherever that, that, so there is that apps. It should have showed me, let's see, it's showing this application. Let's see. Oh, there. So, okay, it was just it was a little bit slower there. Um, what we'll actually see if we go down to the bottom is that there's a folder here called Sims You Share, and Sims You Share right there. You'll see there is a folder, and this is we can't really access this like we can on Windows, so it's a little deceptive. But this is we'll see later how we transfer simulations to and from the iPad. Now, if I actually go on Android, let me now switch over to my Android device here. I have on my phone. Um, let me now go over to. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go. The, I'm going to the. I'll go up to the Sims you share here. Let's see if I can go. Actually, I'll switch over to my other my computer. Um, and I should have, let's see, once I turn on my Android phone, looks like I actually disconnected it, so that does not help. Um, the Android phone is very much like the Windows, uh, like Windows or Mac. We're going to actually just be able to see a Sims you share folder, and along with that folder, we're going to see the Sims folder and then the individual files. We'll come back to the Android once it actually has, um, uh, once, once it, it looks like it's initialized. So let's get back in. That's what we've talked about now, I'm going to switch back over to kind of get our head straight about this. We've talked about the simulations are stored essentially in the Sims you share file, uh, sorry, Sims you share folder inside documents. So now I'm going to have to go through this thing with, um, Got to go through the thing with the Android thing. I'll plug that in. So now the question is, okay, if the things you share are stored in documents by default, what happens if you don't have your documents? Or what happens if you want to create, put it somewhere else? Well, inside of things you share itself, I'm going to now switch back over to things you share. I'm now back over here. We have something in the main menu. I'm sorry, the main screen called Change Main Sim Folder. So if I do change main sim folder, what now, Sims you share on, again, Windows and Mac. For iPad and Android and iPhone, you kind of get what you get. There's, you can't change the folder on the mobile devices. But on Windows and Mac, you can change the main sim folder. Now it says here, please, please press select folder and locate the folder you want, it to, main, you want to be the main sim folder. So now if, uh, when I do select folder here, it's going to now come up, and I'm not sure if you're actually seeing this because it's now a dialog box. But basically, I am selecting, let me see if I can actually switch it over here to say, um, it doesn't look like it's letting me set it up for that dialog box. So if you don't see this, I am now actually selecting the folder I want, where I want this to, um, where I want the simulations to go. And I'm just going to create a new folder on my desktop, um, and I'll call it temp sims. And now, so it's a good idea to create a new folder where you want the simulations to go. Once you select that folder, now 
it's going to use that folder. It's going to put the simulations into that folder. So if I actually I called it temp folder, I'm going to now show you. I created, let me show you my uh, temp folder directory, temp sims directory. I created a folder called temp sims and it automatically put in catalog and a sim folder. Inside the sim folder, it put in, in this case, it put a welcome sim in, but it could also be just empty. So if I go to sims you share now, you'll see, let me go back over and switch the application. Let me switch not to the PowerPoint, but to the application. You'll see here now, I only have the welcome sim in here. Now, it has not touched the simulations in the document folder. And so what that means is you could actually create different collections of your simulations just by uh, changing the main sim folder. So you can have, let's say, for different classes, have, have your sims for a certain type of class in one folder, sims for another type of class in another folder. And that way, you won't mix them up I look like they won't get mixed up in one big list inside your simulation. And since it doesn't delete, it does not delete those simulations from other folders, I could go back here and go back and choose my document folder again. And um, so I'm going to select the folder. I'm going to go back to my document. I'm going to select the Sims you share folder in my document. So I'm not selecting documents. I'm selecting Sims you share folder inside my document. Now when I do that, you'll see all my simulations are back. Uh, it's drawing them from the document, from the Sims you share folder inside of the documents folder. So this is an easy way to kind of organize your own Sims. It, you know, it does take intention. You need to decide what collection of Sims you want to look at. But again, it's very easy just to go and use that option, change main Sim folder, to select among the different collections of simulations that you have. So again, this is only available on Windows and Mac version. It's not available on the uh, mobile version yet. So it's a convenient way that will give that some of the extra functionality for a Windows and Mac version. So if I go back to see what, what my next um, next topic is, what we've gone over now is where SimG SimGear stores SIMs by default again that document, how you can change where the SIMs are stored, and now transferring SIMs among platforms. So I'm going to start out with to see if any any kind of questions anyone wants to put any chat message in there to see if we're on the same page about where SIMs are stored or how you can change where they're stored. I don't see anyone typing a message, but so I'll um, assume that this is making sense right now. Okay, well, that's good. Let's, let's keep moving forward. So the next step is transferring SIMs among platforms. So if I were to go back into the SIMs folder, let me now show you, um, let's say I'm going to go into my, my, uh, my SIMs folder, and this is my welcome SIMs over here. This is, again, if you take a look at the top of the folder, it says temp SIMs. This is my temp SIMs. Um, let's say I now have, let me go back to my application. We go back to Sims you share, and um, let's say I have, um, let's say this uh, this pipeline scenario. I want to transfer this pipeline scenario scenario to another computer, let's say a Windows or Mac computer that is running Sims you share. What I can do, the easiest way, but the most manual way, is to just copy the pipeline folder from where I have the pipeline scenario into the document Sims you share. Sims folder on where I want it to go, so my target where I want to, 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 to put that. So, for example, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pipeline scenario and let me go over into, um, I'm going to go share my documents. I'm going to go to Sims you share. I'm going to go to my Sims. And somewhere here I should see pipeline or something similar, recognizable pipeline here. All I do here um, is I'm going to copy this folder. And now what I'm going to do is go, let's say I could put that onto a thumb drive. I could put it into a, um, into a common shared folder. Um, but what I'm going to do now is to go, let's see if I have some uh, desktop somewhere. I'm going to um, open up my desktop. There must be some, I just always forget about this. Let me see, where is my desktop? Okay. Now I have, let's say I've, I've copied it somehow. 
I have my temp sims folder here. This is the other computer. And let's say I'm now in the documents sim view share folder on the other computer. And I once I'm in that folder, I look into the sims folder. And now all I do here is I paste it in place. So I pasted pipeline in place. Now let me see, I'm going to go back um, on this new computer, the supposedly new computer. Um, let me now go back over to the application. Um, on, the, on the new computer here, let's say I run SimsViewShare. And I'm going to change my main Sim folder on that computer to where to, to um, well, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to make sure I'm pointing to the right place. On my new computer, let's say it was document SimsViewShare. Um, What's going to happen once you've actually once SimViewShare starts running? This is the message I wanted you to see. Once you put the simulation in the right place, and then you start SimViewShare, it will come up with this window that says, "I found a new sim." So, once you start SimViewShare, it looks for new simulations, and it saw that there was a, a folder that it didn't recognize before. It wasn't in its catalog, so it says, "I found it. What should I do?" Well, should I add it? And so if I say add it, now if I actually see here, I have my pipeline scenario in my folder properly. So if I were to remove a simulation from that Sims folder, it will also update its list, but it won't say anything. It'll do it silently. Because it's just, okay, maybe you deleted it, maybe you moved it, something like that. So if you add it, once you when you start SimViewShare, Sim it looks for the differences between what it thought it had in the catalog and what actual files are there. And if there's something that's different, a new thing, it will ask you, hey, I see something new. Do you want me to add it? Usually you want to add it, but it just gives you that convenience to make sure before it adds it to the, the official catalog list. Uh, if you were running things you share and you added something and you want to now check, is you wanted to not exit the program for some reason, you could also use scan for new sims in the main menu here. And it will tell you, I didn't find any new sims found. Now, this same mechanism will work on the iPad and Android and iPhone and everything. Um, um, when you work on the, I, on, on, the, uh, on the Android, let's see if actually it should be, should be set at this point. Let me just take a quick look. I'm going to switch over to, switch over here to my Android device my Android device here. We'll open it up over there. It's supposed to have opened up over here. But again, just like another computer, if I, I, it should have opened up over here and gone into the documents. There's a, there's a uh, right off of the, um, the, the SD card, there's a Sims you share folder, which also has the sub Sims folder and the like. And you just sort of, on Android, you just, it's easy to transfer a simulation onto and off of the device. On I, excuse me. On the iPad, it becomes a little trickier. And people, um, what happens on the iPad? If you look over, let me go over to my iTunes over here. Um, you'll see at the bottom. Well, that's home screen. Interesting. Oh, I see. I haven't shared this. Let me go back to iTunes, and I'm going to go to the bottom there. You'll see here. There's something that says Add File. And if I want to add a file, I can't add a folder directly in iTunes because it does not preserve. If I say add, let's say add this folder here, it, does not, it just says it opens the folder. And it, you can't add an individual file. So the initial thought about going into, let's say, wherever my documents and the sims you share, whatever it is, and trying to add a sim, if I try and add, let's say, like pipeline here, I can't add the individual pieces and it, and it will be recognized on the iTunes. What I have to do instead is I have to create a compressed zip file of the simulation. So what I would do is I'd take the whatever, let's say pipeline residential, zip that, and then when I'm using this add file mechanism, I point to the zip file. Once you run Sims you share and do the scan for Sims, or if you just start Sims you share, it will see that it has that zip file ready, and it will unpack it automatically. So the iPad, iPhone is a little bit more cumbersome. And these are certainly things, this idea of sharing, that we're working 
the remedy to make simpler. But um, to, so to put stuff onto the iPad or iPhone, you have to zip the one or more of these folders, and then you add that file to um, to what you want to add to when you're zipping this thing, or when we're adding it over here. If you wanted to pull everything out of the iPad, all you do is you click Send to Share, you save to, and now I'll show you. Let's say I'll put it on, off my uh, let's say I'll say off my desktop. I'm just going to say. And now if I actually were to go here on my desktop, let me see if I actually can show you something where where I have it there. Okay, so I'm sharing this over here. If I were to now go um, to Jonathan's desktop, let me see where I actually have, um, let me just go over to where, where I've got it. If I were to actually look at my desktop, let me see. My desktop over here, when I saved it off of the iPad, it saved it into a file called Sim, a folder called SimViewShare. And notice here, there's also Sims and catalogs. So inside here, all these folders are the simulations I made on the iPad. So that's how I actually pull the files off of the iPad or iPhone and put them onto my Windows computer. Or I could then zip up the files easy enough to say if I wanted to take Hall and House 1. I can right click and I can go send to a compressed zip folder. And that one's called, doesn't matter what the name is, but now this one, this house one zip has all that I, enough stuff I could load onto another iPad. Again, a bit cumbersome, but still, uh, but something workable. So that's, again, how you are transferring. I'm going to head back over to our outline. How you actually transfer SIMs among the platforms. Everything comes down to identifying the SIM from inside of your SIMs you share folder, inside of the SIMs folder within that, copying it in some way over to somewhere else. And how you actually copy it, whether a USB drive or a network drive or whatever, is irrelevant, um, just as long as you get it onto the other platform in some way. The Station Edition lets you point to, um, let's see, actually I should say that changing the main SIM folder lets you point to another folder, like we were doing before, pointing to the folder on my desktop. There's no reason you couldn't point to a shared folder that you have in Dropbox or a shared folder on your network or Google Drive or Box or whatever. So all those folders are the same from the perspective of the program. So one of the nice things, if I were to change over, for example, I'll show you now, show you uh, changing over to like a Dropbox. I'm going to go over to Simsy Share here. And now I could just as easily, let's say, change my main SIM folder. And instead of here, one of my computers over here, I could just go in and go to my Dropbox. And so now when I, I, I create a folder in here, let's say, um, in this my Dropbox, I, I, uh, this, this folder is going to be um, Jonathan Shared SIM. And I select that folder wherever that went. Looks like it, uh, um, wherever that went, somewhere, oh, was it Jonathan Shared Sims, I select this folder, it's Jonathan Shared Sims, and now I'm writing to Dropbox, and let Dropbox or Box or Google Drive handle the transference to other computers. So on another computer, it just shows up in the person's Dropbox or Shared Drive. So that's how you could easily transfer Sims among the platforms. And let's go back to our, our, our kind of agenda to see where we're at. Um, I'll take pause a moment. Anyone has any questions about this? Put, you can put a message in the chat window or on your microphone and ask them questions about how you might transfer among different platforms. Okay, without any questions. Now, another reason why you may want to transfer is let's say you, you have students that you want to give your simulations to your students. All you have to do is to take those simulation folders and put them on some medium, and it gives these students some instructions or point them to the documentation that shows them how to put their simulations into their own copy of things you share. So it's a minute or two minute step, but it's a way, again, of distributing your own material, not just for your own convenience in developing simulations. It's a way of getting your stuff into the hands of your students. So in the fourth point here, saying putting sims 
in common folders. We kind of uh, directed that at the end of what I was saying about putting it into Dropbox or Google Drive or Box or something. You don't have to on Windows and Mac make it a local folder. It doesn't. I mean, it, it's it's a local folder in Dropbox. But I mean, you can have your common folders, your Dropbox folders, and point sim you share to start with the changing the base folder. To point that over to a common folder, and then all your sims are stored over there. Now the downside of this is that you still only really have a single view of uh, really a single folder at a time. So where I'm looking at this right now, I only have one list. So if I go back over here and I say, let me change the main sim folder back to my, um, my back to my sims you share. The key thing here again, uh, it bears worth repeating. You don't put it in documents. You put it into the sims you share or into inside the sims you share folder of documents. That's it. Um, it's not at your document folder level. It's inside the sims you share folder within documents. So now I've got my simulations over here, but it's just a single list, and it shows you the top 10 or so of them, and you've got to scroll around to find whichever one you want. But there's no way of creating essentially segmented lists or really folders. And, um, people are thinking, okay, if I have 5, 10, 20, it can be a bit cumbersome to scroll and move things around. Is there a way to do some kind of segmenting? The answer is that we put that kind of segmenting into the folder um, in the station edition. Because uh, the station edition is designed primarily to allow people to share simulations. And so, so the idea that all the simulations are just sort of stored in one big list, I mean, it makes it easy if you only have a few simulations. But if you have 50, 75, 100, or whatever, and different people are contributing, different people are creating, um, and it's up to each person to name it, it can be very confusing. So what we've done in the station edition is to allow the developer to create different folders and then move things around from different folders. So I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. See, I'm going to, I am now opening up this, the, the um, station edition. Just for people who are not familiar with the station edition, the key difference is the ability with the is the ability to have multiple users, the different Windows logins, create on the same computer. So, for example, you have one computer in the station or two where everyone has their own login. Rather than the personal edition where it's limited to a user on that computer, one user, the station edition, when you install it or you put it onto a network, because it also can be installed on the network, then every user on that computer has their own private simulation and also can share simulations with other people on that computer or through the network, kind of like what we already show with common shared folders, whether it's your own network that you can share um, private network or whether you use Dropbox or whatever. So with the station edition, um, it also has a single list over here. And these are actually from Jim Murphy's uh, talk a couple weeks ago about flow path simulation. Um, and so I could still, with the station edition, change the main sim folder. Um, this is the main sim folder is where I'm writing my simulations to. So I still may want to that may not always be the document sim you share folder. It could be where I want. But with the station edition, let's say I want to use um, some station 15 scenario or other people's station, uh, other people's scenario. What I can do here is actually go, when I'm in the select the sim to edit, I can actually go here and add a sim folder. This is only available in the station edition, add sim folder. When I add this, I can now create, let's say, something called, um, let's say I'm in station one, station one sim. But I, I don't want it to be um, necessarily just available to me. I'm going to put station one sim in the Dropbox folder, or let's say a shared network folder for station one. So I create station one sim folder. It's going to ask me, where should I put that? I'm going to now, just since I don't have any network folders in my private network, I'm going to just put it on Dropbox. I'm going to now create a new folder that I'm going to call Station 1 Sim, whatever the name is. And I'm going to say, select that folder. So now what you've noticed when I click that 
is now there's this, these gray things on the program. It says my simulation, and this my simulations means from my base folder. But also now it's segmented their station one sims, which is empty right now. So now my list, I've broken it up into simulations that are private to me and simulations that are available somewhere else. And I can create more. I mean, they're available. What I've done is to create them on a local drive. It could be a, my shared drive. I can go here and add some more folders, or I can even remove SIM folders. Again, this is, so if I now, how do I get SIMs into the uh, shared folder here? Well, I could use the technique that we showed before which was the copy and paste. Go into this document, send you share folder, copy it out, stick it into the thing. But it's such a common operation that we added it right into the program itself. So let's say I wanted to take Chris House. Now, if I clone this, it will copy it inside of my private area or inside of my folder. There's a new, once you select something, there's a new um, a menu item which says copy sim to. So if I say copy SIM2, it will then give me a list of all my SIM folders. And by default, it knows, well, I'm already at my simulations, so pick the other one. Uh, and if there was were more, then you would give you a list you could select. So I'm going to copy it to station one SIM. I'm going to enter a new name for the copy. It could be the same name. And now you see I have Chris House in my simulations, and I have Chris House in station one SIM. Presumably, other people would have a link to station one sim, that folder, and so now they would actually see Chris House inside there. There's no link between Chris House in station one sim and my own private Chris House. Those are separate simulations. So if someone messes up Chris House in station one sim, it's not going to affect my private one, and then vice versa. Whatever I do in my private one is not going to affect the other. They're, they're at this point separate simulations that just happen to be derived from the same thing. So over here as well, I can rename and I can reorder. Uh, so let me actually go here and say, let me copy sim, copy fire growth over, copy sim to station one sims, and I'll give it the same name there. Now once I'm over here in station one sims, I can change the order just the same way I changed it. But I can't really, uh, when I'm changing the order, I'm just within that simulation folder. So what I change over here is um, how it'll work in that shared folder. Now there are ways if, for people who do have the station edition to pre-configure shared folders. So some of our customers have a set of three, four, five different stations, and so when someone opens the program, it automatically has these lists segmented into the various into their various stations. So that's a little more um, complex than for this talk, except to say once you have multiple simulation folders, you can actually mark some of those folders as play only, or you can mark them as there's a bunch of different options there that are more advanced. Um, but the, the real key thing here is we wanted to keep, or keep it as simple as possible. Um, so there's basically one scrolling list. There's not, uh, that way people don't have to remember where am I storing the sim, the casual user. Um, but there is the ability to create these sort of different segments and different folders. If I decide that, okay, I'm done with station one sim, and I go here, I can also remove the folder, which doesn't delete the contents. All it does is it removes it from my list. So it says, you want to remove station one sims? I say, yes. And now I'm back to just a single list. If later down the road I want to go back to that station one sim, you can see I can just go and add the folder back. So it's not deleting any simulations that are out there. It's merely um, it's deleting the, the reference that there exists another folder. So if I add sim folder here and I call it, S1 sims. I can go back here and find out wherever I put it. Um, I put here sims you share. Let's see. I probably had it under uh, Jonathan. Uh, I put it under station. What a station one sims. So I select station one sims. Select that folder, and now it repopulates because it really hasn't touched those those simulations in that shared folder. So now I'm going to go back to our list here. What we've done is we've talked about where sims are stored, how you can change the base main, the main base sim folder, how you transfer sims among the different platforms, 
how you can put them into common folders, I mean network folders, and whether it's Dropbox or whatever, how you make SIM folders in the station edition. So that really only leaves any kind of questions you may actually have. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and interest and look forward to hearing um, how we can help you get the right information. Now, I should also mention that these have six. OK, and Rick has to go. Well, thank you very much. Certainly, we have some more ideas for sharing that are coming down the road. But hopefully, this gives you enough opportunity. Appreciate, Rick, your attention and time. Um, if no one has any other questions, I will uh, sign off at this point. We'll make the recordings available. We stop the recording.